And we're going to start section 4.2, but I'm going to backtrack for a moment and I'm, I'm going to talk about something that's going to help us lead into what we're doing today because I don't like the way most instructors introduce this section. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But if I take a look at what's going on here, okay, and I'm going, yeah, should be due. I got the point. I got rise. I have the point zero three. It's right there, right, right there. And oh, sort of this kind of slant. I have the point one five. I have the point two seven. I have the point three nine. You could tell me what the next point's going to be, right? It's going to be four. Yeah, it's going to be 411. And, you know, this is that that whole constant rate of change. Constant rate of change. That we've talked about before, and that constant rate of change we refer to as the slope. OK, I'm going to do this way. What's this point going to be? Well, instead of going up to if I go down one, I'm going to go to. Yeah, thanks, Paul. This point's going to be negative one, one. And, and we, we remember a lot of stuff from this. This was, you know, this was the classic linear function. And yeah, I had a Y intercept at three. So Y equaled three. And then I added something each time I moved, right? My slope was a rise of two and a run of one. So it was two over one times X. And, you know, well, we're used to Y equals MX plus B. And I actually did a conference one time and I made this case of why it should be Y equals B plus MX. I'm going to show you a little bit more of that in a minute. But this is my ever popular linear function. You know, and we did the, the Y intercept here. And then what did I keep doing is my rate of change after that, you know, and if I looked at the ordered pairs, if I looked at the ordered pairs, I had my initial value. And then as I went up one, I added two. I went up one, I added two. I went up one, I added two. Oh, oh it's a little crooked. I'm sorry. And some of you, well, maybe one of you, hopefully a couple of you printed out the fourth assignment. And on the first page, you're going to see values like this. And you're going to see an initial value of three. That's my y-intercept. And what's my rate of change each time? I keep going up by that constant rate of change of two. And we loved it, right? We loved it. We had our initial value, initial value. And then we added something each time. We had an initial value at three. We added two. We added two. We added two and kept going. Well, today we're going to look at something that I think a lot of faculty members don't introduce it the way that I like it to be introduced. And that is, it's going to parallel what's here. And I'm going to take a look at this guy. Hmm. And I'm going to ask you, well, yeah, this isn't a straight line, is it? Because I went up one and I went up four. Then when I went up one, I went up 12. It's not the same. But it actually, has something going on here. Yeah, and, and, and I'm just, what would the next point be? Three comma, what do you think it's gonna be? Well, again, this wasn't a constant rate of change. This is something a little bit different, but what's the next? 54. Excellent, awesome sauce. How'd you get that? Uh, each one was, going up by three times. Like right, two times each three one's three. multiplied by three, excellent. Just like if I came this way, I'd be dividing by three, I'd have the point negative one, two thirds, right? And this guy's gonna come down and I'm gonna keep dividing by three to go to the next one, it would be two ninths, two twenty sevenths, two, and it would never, ever, ever cross that line. And we have a name for this line, it would be an asymptote. So it's going to come down and never cross that line. 
Well, let's see, like we had up here, we had a starting value, right? My starting value was two. And to get to the next one, I multiplied by three. To get to the next one, I multiplied by three. So I kept multiplying by three. Well, this is going to be y equals two times three to the x power. Here my x was zero, so that's one, it gave me two. Here my x was one, it gave me six. My x was two, that gave me 18. When x is three, it gave me 54. So I have a list of values like I wrote up above. I have that initial value, this time it's at two. When I went to one, I multiplied by three. When I went to two, I when I went to three, I multiplied by three. I kept going each time. So you start to see a pattern of what's going on here. Again, I have this initial value. Okay. And then I keep multiplying by three. So up here, you know, I, I said I'm going to start at three. And I added two, I added two, I added two, I added two to keep going with my points. Here I'm starting with two and then I'm multiplying by three, multiplying by three. So you see, instead of repeated addition, we have repeated multiplication. This guy is called an exponential function. an exponential function and we don't use b and m like you see up above this time for some reason we say c times a to the x my initial value what i multiply by each time my initial value what i add each time so the similarities between these two this is the way i love to see it introduced Drawing the comparison. Instead of adding something over and over, I'm multiplying by something over and over. Okay. And we just looked at the graph of an exponential function. It's going to go something like that. Whoop, you can't see it so well. I better an exponential function. It's going to look something like this. So I'm thinking, like, yeah, I got a domain. That's all real numbers. And it looks like my range is all of my y's are greater than zero because it comes down, but it's never going to touch that line. I keep dividing by three, divide by three, divide by three, divide by three. You know, if I went this way, divide by three, divide by three, divide by three, and keep going. Questions? So if you were now in a traditional room, the instructor would say, I would like you to graph this. I'm going, oh, you're killing me. What is my, well, I got y equals three x, three to the x, excuse me, it's an exponential. But what's missing here? The initial. Yeah, what do you think the initial value is? Zero. Yeah, because zero times anything would kill it. Oh, it's actually yeah. going to be one. It's actually going to be one. So I'm saying, okay, um, let's see. If X is zero, if X is zero, I'm at three to the, I'm at one. When X is at one, well, heck, I don't have to spend time. I know I'm going to just keep multiplying by three. This is kind of easy. My initial value is at one. That's way down there. At one, I'm at three. At two, I'm at nine. At three, I'm at, oh, I'm all the way up to 27. And here we go again. Yeah, na, 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 na. And I know what's going to happen here. I'm going to get really close, but I'm never going to cross that. So what we talked about first, once we write it as y equals initial value times the multiplier. C times A to the, yeah, it's one. And it gonna, it's gonna go like a crazy. Boom, perfect, great. And 
we're going to mess with you a little bit, and we're going to talk about different kind of exponential graphs. But if I threw this bad boy in, no, wait a minute, I'm going to write it my way. Y equals one times two to the negative X. Hmm. That's going to be the same as one times one over two to the X. Well, whoop de doo Let's see what we have going. My initial value at zero is going to be one. Same as above. My initial value is going to be one. If I put one in, one half, two, one fourth, three, two, one eighth, et cetera. Well, uh, that's, that's just not going to be fun because there's zero, one, right? There's one, one half here. Oh, hey, I think I see some kind of pattern going here. What if I put in negative one? Well, if I, if I say let X equals negative one, that's going to become one times one over two to the negative one, one times, flip it, two. Oh, that's two. Negative two means I'm going to square it and flip four. Uh, I got that. I got that kind of thing going. Now when I graph it, I'm trying to use red, 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 red. It's almost like it was flipped over the y-axis. And in fact, that's what it was. That negative exponent made me flip over the axis. Again, I like identifying this. Meanwhile, another Math 103 teacher is telling you to pick points and plug them in and da-da-da-da. And they're losing this whole concept of the initial value. But we like it. We love it. We want some more of it. Okay. Questions so far? Questions so far? Well, we're not going to do a lot with this, but I want to show you that just like transformations from all of those other parent functions we had, I can do transformations here. And I'm going to start by saying, y equals negative 2, x plus 1, plus 1. And if I wrote it like this, y equals a, 2 to the x minus plus k, x minus h plus k, you're going to hopefully start thinking, oh, wait, h is negative 1. That moves it to the left, negative 1. My a is negative 1. That means it's flipped. And then finally, I'd move it up one. H equals negative one. A equals negative one. K equals one. This would be left one. So it goes back to the transformations we did, the H, the A, and the K. This is going to flip it. And this is going to move the whole graph up one. So it still exists. As you see, the parent function is Y equals two to the X. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Can I get a thumbs up? Come on, hit those reaction buttons. There's one. That's it. I only saw one. Two, three. All right. Everybody's having a good time. Second thing for today, we have another special number. Okay. This special number is called E. And we've, we've had a special number before. You know, we had I, that equaled the square root of negative one. Today we're looking at one that's called E. And when it comes to working with exponentials, this E becomes kind of important, right? And what we do is we say, I, I don't know what this is yet. One plus one over X to the X power kind of deal. Not really sure what that is, but as X gets bigger and bigger, and a lot of times you're going to see it written as the limit as X goes to infinity. Whoa, I've seen that before, dude. The limit as X goes to infinity. That means as X gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, it keeps getting closer and closer and closer to this number. 
Well, if we had time and we messed around the graphing calculator, we could start to throw numbers in and you would see that slowly this gets to that point. If you threw in one, you would get one plus one, which is two to the first power. Okay, that's two. If you put in two, you will get two plus one half, excuse me, one plus one half, which is three halves. And when you square it, you would get nine fourths, which is two and a quarter. And if you kept going and kept going, it just gets closer and closer to this bad boy. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be working with this E. And you need to be able to work with it on your calculator. So I'm going to grab my graphing calculator. And I'm going to say, all right, party on. I want to clear. And I'm looking for E. And over it here, here it is. Over here it is. You see this LN. And right above it in blue is E to the X power. So the first one, I'm going to hit second LN. And you see it gives me E to the, I'm going to hit two and hit enter. And I get 7.389. 7 7.389. The next one. E to the negative third power. Somebody want to give that to me. E raised to the negative third power. Uh, 20.08. Okay, did you make it to the negative third power? Oh, negative. Oh, my. Whoops. Yeah. yeah. All right, it's. Point zero four nine seven. Yeah, yeah, but Eight. I went back to three decimal places, so I made a point five zero. Oh, I need to read the paper before I do this. Well, it says round to four. Maybe, maybe I need to read the paper before four nine eight. Yeah, this was yeah. Not well. e to the square root of seven. Second e to the. I don't know how this is going to work. Second blue of seven. Check that out. I got it on my calculator. Above the squared, above this x squared, there's a square root. And I have 14.0940. There's one more in there, but I think you get the idea of what's going on. And hopefully you're not going, well, I have a calculator right now. I'm not going to try it. Because coming up, this fundamental is going to be something you need to do later. Okay. So now we know what an exponential function looks like. We're a little bit familiar with step two here, this, this letter E that it actually has a value. It comes from this, which we're going to see in a couple of minutes. And um, we, so we're going to hang on to that as a building block for what we're doing next. Question so far. Okay, well, here we go. Ba 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 ba. Grandma just gave you fifteen thousand dollars. You're not allowed to spend it. Spend until you're twenty-five, because you ought to lose your minds with fifteen thousand dollars. Right now, your age is 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, six years. Come on, Grandma. Meanwhile, Grandma said, that's okay. I'm going to put it in an account for you at 2.5%. Thanks, Grandma. This is going to be something called compounded. annually. That means every year you're going to get 2.5% on that amount that you have. Oh boy. Year zero. Hey, that's like my initial value. I have $15,000. Year one. How much will you have at the end of year one? 
Well, let's see. It's going to be that 15,000 plus 15,000 times 0 0.025. Somebody's going to give me that on their calculator. 15,375. 15,375. The bank will gladly keep your pennies. I would if I was the bank, but you kind of have to give them back. So give me two decimal places and do not round up because the bank won't round up. Oh, um, it actually came out even, so zero, zero. Nice. Nice. Huh. The second year is going to be that 15,000. 375 plus 15,375 times 0 0.025. So now you're going to get more than 375 added on because you're going to get interest on interest. Whoop, whoop. You're going to get interest on interest. I'm thinking you're going to get about, I'm just throwing this out there. 15,000 $759.37 <laughs> round up one did I round up no no you need it came out to 375 for pennies so yeah but the bank's not going to give you that five oh, that's right you didn't say that yeah that's that's the movie there was a couple movies like Superman 3 and Office Space where somebody realized there were these partial pennies so they just put them in their account and they got all this extra money. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. So I could do that for a third year, a fourth year, a fifth. Okay. I, I, I'm too lazy. I'm a mathematician. I have to be able to shortcut this. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm going to come back up here and I see that there's 15,000 in both of the, here's a term and here's a term. So I'm going to pull that 15,000 out. I'm going to be left with one plus 0 0.025. Everybody with me? Everybody's with me? I distributed. So really what I did was in order to get that answer, I said, I'm going to take 15,000 and I'm going to increase it by 25%. This is my rate of increase. Because now, if I took 15,000 times that, I get this answer. You notice it happens here again, right? It happens here again. Here I have 15,375 times one plus 0 0.025, right? So there's that 1.025 again, 375 times 1.025. That gave me that answer, agree? Yeah. But what was the 15,375? Well, that was my original 1,500. After one year, I added this. The second year, I took that answer and added this. What would happen for year three? I can multiply it by this again, right? 15,000 times 1.025 gave me that answer. I took that answer and basically did the same thing multiplied it by 1.025, but this guy right here was from my last equation. That was from up here. This guy was from up here. So after two, so it looks like every year I'm going to be multiplying by this. Wait a minute. So I'm I'm going out on a limb. After six years, I would say multiply it by 1.025 six times. And what do I get? How much money is in that account after six years?
I'm going to have to take this, raise it to this power, then multiply it by that. Y'all should be trying it because that's important to what we're doing right now. Oh, you want the answer? Yeah, go ahead. 17,395.40. That's it. Now, the other thing with this calculation, where we were doing it by hand, we cut out the partial penny, cut out the partial penny. So six times we'd be cutting out those partial pennies. They would have to go somewhere. But if we use this calculation, they don't until your final answer. All right. So I'm hoping that you're trying this on your calculator and you all got this. You know, grandma made you wait six years, but you got an extra $2,400 on it by waiting. Now you can go blow it. No. Now you can use it to pay back your college loan. <laughs> All right. Got one quick question. Yes, please. Can you re uh, say where you got the one to do the one plus point zero two five? Absolutely. If I gave you this problem, six times one plus point two, you would distribute, right? And if you distributed, you'd have six times one and six plus six times 0.2. Well, I'm seeing a six in both of these, so I'm factoring the six out. When I take a six out of here, there's still a one left. When I take a six out, it still has to be one plus. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we're almost done with this and we'll get back to our sheet. This point, this 2.5%, this is called our rate of change. Oh, and by the way, you notice initial value plus what I multiply by each year. That's my exponential. What I multiplied by was this is bigger than one. So it's increasing at a rate of, and this was 2.5%. So converting from percents to decimals, which you did several years ago in a math class. So if, if I have an increase of 2.5%, that's going to be 1 plus 0 0.025. And that's where I got that 1.025 that I multiplied by each time. Okay. What if I said it's going to go up 28% this time? Well, it would be 1 plus 0.28. My rate of change would be 1.28. That's what I would be multiplying by two each time. So if I threw a decimal out, 1.085, you would say that it's going up what percent? Bigger than one, so it's going up. Eight and a half. Yeah, 8.5%. Good. Now, what if I said my rate of change is 0.9? Is it going up? No. Every time I multiply by 0.9, it's going down. So this would be one, not plus this time, but minus 0 0.10. This guy is going down 10%. It's going down 10%. Oh, so what's in the parentheses? What's in the parentheses up here? Tells me if I'm going up or down. If it's greater than one, I'm going up. If it's less than one, I'm going down. I'm yelling timber. What if it was 0.5? What would I be going down by? 50 or half. Yeah, I'm going down 50%. I'm cutting it in half every time. And that brings up this term. You probably have heard of it. Half-life goes down 50% every time. If I have $100, goes down to 50. Then it goes down to 25. 
Then it goes down to 12.5 and it would keep being cut in half over and over and over. Okay, so that's, that's that whole half-life. All right, so now I'm gonna come back over to here and we're gonna start talking about compounding interest. Well, this first one is okay. There's not a whole lot to it, but this is for one year or two years or three years. I just have a principal, I have a rate, I have a time, and I have what the interest is. These are the two that we like, right here and right here. All right, so let's see what's going on. In this first one, in this first, oh, come on, Dan, there you go, there you go. A equals T e one plus R over N to the NT power. Well, that's fantastic if I knew what any of those letters meant. Well, I'm gonna show you what they mean. A is for the amount. That's gonna be how much money I have at the end. P stands for principal. That's the amount I start with. Okay, so far so good. Now, earlier we did the principal and then we did one plus the rate times the time, the raised to the time power. Sound about right? We had that 0 0.25%, 0 0.025, changed it from a percent, raised it to the time power. Okay, that's good. And this was when things were happening yearly. Every year I did it. Well, what if I said, I would like it done monthly? Yeah. Am I gonna give them this rate every month? Well, no, I'm gonna cut that up into 12 pieces. So now I would be saying my amount is going to equal the principal, still the principal, except I'm doing this 12. So I'm going to have to take that rate and cut it into 12 so they don't get it all the time. Now the time is going to be, for example, six years, but I'm also doing it every month for six years. I'm doing it every month for six years. So that's now going to be 12 times it. I'd have to calculate this. So the first bank on the corner says, hey, give me this, this um, what did we have? You're gonna, grandma's giving you how much? $15,000 at a rate of 2.5%. And you knew at the end of six years, you were gonna have 17,395.4047. And you were all happy. This was annually or yearly. All of a sudden, a new bank moves in. And they say, well, listen, we're going to do it monthly. What's the new amount going to be? Well, it was the 15,000 times one plus, And let's see, it was my rate, 0 0.025. But as I said a minute ago, I'm going to cut it up into 12 pieces. And then it's... 12 for the number of times per year for six years, I get a number like that. So this was monthly. I chopped my interest by 12, but because I'm doing it every month for six years, it became 72 times I calculated, 12 times a year for six years. Is this a better deal than that? Just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. What did you get? 17,424 and 0.79. 424.79. Does anybody want 30 bucks for picking a different bank? I'll take it. I'll take it. Well, that, that, was, that was all fine and dandy, but now bank A says, well, to heck with you, we're gonna do it daily because we have this nice formula. Huh. Well, la di da, 15,000, one plus 
that 025, we're going to chop that up into 365 pieces. We're going to do it every day for six years. Oh. Going to be a little better. Going to be a little better. Good calculator practice, folks. Anybody? I'm going to take this, divide it by this first. Then I'm going to add one. Then I'm going to raise it to this power, these two numbers multiplied together. Take that times 15,000. Um, I got 17,427.42. That's a little bit better, right? What if the bank across the street said, well, I'm going to think of the biggest number possible and I'm going to blah, blah, blah you. What is it we're working with? One plus one over. And again, this is going to be N. And that end power up there, the ends is what keeps changing, right? The end keeps going. And when the end gets bigger and bigger, and I think we mentioned this a little bit ago, when n goes to infinity, what does that end up equaling? What does that end up equaling? Uh, da, 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 da. Guess what it ended up equaling? E. So instead of using the world's biggest number in there where that 365 was, instead of and we're going to yank out this one plus one over n to the n, and we're going to stick in E. And what are we going to get? We're going to get this new equation. There's some whole math jigamaru ba 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 boo. And it says, if I want to compound it continuously, every possible second, I can just use this formula with E and pull that out. So now for continuous, I'm going to use this formula, A equals P E to the RT. And that's where this E came from. We yanked it out of there. So now I'm going to say I have 15,000 times E raised to the point zero two five times T power. Point zero two five times six, right? Per principle equals E raised to the RT power. I'm going to multiply these two together, take E raised to that. And this is the best possible one. It's going to be a little bit better than that. But that's where this E comes from. And let's see that. Seventeen thousand. Look like it only went up nine cents. Uh four two seven fifty one. That's what I got. Four two seven point five one. That's the best deal you can get. Start listening to bank commercials. You want to hear compounded continuously. My answer is if it compounded so much, why did it only go up so little? Because think about taking point zero two five and dividing it by three sixty five. I mean, we're getting really small decimals. But this, this is going to be the best you can get at 0.025%. But this is PERT. Banks know it. Bank tellers know it. They're not really sure where it comes from. They just use it. It's there. They plug it into their computer. 
So that's kind of cool. So what I want you to do is, well, we kind of just did this problem, didn't we? Number nine, 15,000, 2.5%. We did it for six years instead of seven. We just did it for six years. We did annually. We did quarterly. Heck, we, did, we didn't do quarterly. That would be four times a year. We did monthly, which was 12. We did daily. But yeah, cool. I like it. I love it. I want, okay. So I'm going to take a look at these two and I'm going to go, whoa, weapons grade plutonium. Um, you don't know if I want to mess with any weapons grade plutonium. Um, so the other one is the population in Mexico. All right. All right. No, I think we can do this. Yeah. If I look at this guy, I, I have a formula, an X, oh, I'm sorry, an exponential formula. What's my initial value? 0. 0.5. You know, we should start seeing something. Oh, there it is. Originally contained 0. 0.5 kilograms. So that's my C. Yeah, okay. I got, you know, I have this A. So I'm dealing with this being 0. 0.05 as well. You know, this is like 0. 0.5 was my original value. And then I have this 0. 0.5 kind of thing going on, which is like half-life. I see half-life. We've talked about that. And it talks about, you know, all kind of stuff up here. But T divided by 2,400. Don't overthink that. Let that the way it is. So you're now given an equation. And we're going to start with, okay. So T, so how much is left after 24,000 years? I have half a kilogram to start, right? And after 24,000 years, how much is left? Man, weapon grade plutonium is yuck. Man, that's the, so after 24,000 years, because T is years, how much is left? Well, I'm going to use 0 0.5. I started with 0 0.5. 24,000 divided by, well, 24,000. That's one. Half of a half is a quarter. So it's down to 0 0.25 kilograms. That plutonium is not going away very fast, is it? How much is left after 72,000 years? I start with 0.5. I'm cutting it in half. Now my T is 72,000 divided by 24,000, which is really the same as three. 0 0.5 times zero, oh, almost wrote something else, 0 0.5 to the third power. I got point zero six two five. Thanks. You're right. So after seventy two thousand years, this uh, this uh, ooh, half a kilogram is down to that much. Seems like a long time. Questions. One hundred and eleven people to start. This is increasing because it's greater than one. Looks like it's increasing at 0.994%. Not much, but it's slowly increasing. Slowly increasing. What would the population be? Well, this was 2010, four years later. What would the population be in 2014? What would the population be in 2085? The only exponential formulas. It's growing, growing at almost 1% a year. Blah, 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 blah. T is four. 
So T equals four, T equals 75. To get that, but I'm going to rewrite this because I don't like 115 million. 115 million, 479,600 people. So it went up. It went up in four years. It went up from 111 million to 115. So. This time, if you put 75 in, still growing, this is bigger than one. Gonna be a lot of people in Mexico at this rate, if it keeps growing. The year 2085, it more than doubled. goes up pretty quick. Questions? Comments? <laughs>